Hi, my name is Mike Hayton, and I want to talk to you today about carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is extremely common. It occurs in about 5% of the population, and probably is more common in ladies than men, by about 4 to 5 to 1. The symptoms most commonly are pain, particularly in the thumb, index, and middle finger, associated with tingling and pins and needles. It's most common at night when patients are woken from their sleep in the early hours for which they have to shake their hands to gain relief. Patients at this time notice that their hand feels swollen. It probably isn't swollen, but there's that sense of, of the fingers feeling like sausages. Carpal tunnel syndrome, in the vast majority of the cases, has got no known cause. But some patients who perhaps are pregnant, have rheumatoid arthritis, or are a little bit overweight, or who've got hormonal problems such as thyroid, May, um, may develop carpal tunnel syndrome. In certain situations such as severe trauma after wrist fractures, carpal tunnel syndrome also can occur. The main reason why patients get carpal tunnel syndrome is an increase in pressure around the carpal tunnel, which is a tunnel inside the wrist that passes the tendons that cause the fingers to bend along with the nerve called the median nerve. This passes underneath this uh, white fibre structure that you can see on this anatomical model. Unfortunately, my little boy has broken it off, but the, the nerve was a little yellow projection here that passes underneath the nerve. You can see that the little finger nerve, the ulnar nerve, passes over the top of this band and is not affected. And that's why patients with carpal tunnel syndrome have symptoms in their thumb, index and middle finger. You can see in this particular anatomical model, the middle finger is missing. And again, that's my five-year-old boy at play. I think he's probably destined to become a debt collector. How does the carpal tunnel syndrome become investigated? The vast majority of patients do have quite classic symptoms with pins and needles in the thumb, index and middle finger, waking them from their sleep. And when this is combined with a classic clinical examination, a good diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome can be made. But occasionally, we arrange nerve conduction studies. And in this case, this electrical speed of the nerve across the wrist is recorded. One side is compared with the other side. And if the patient has symptoms in both hands, we compare it to the normal population. Physical examination of carpal tunnel syndrome often induces trying to provoke and make the carpal tunnel symptoms more, uh, uh, more severe. The commonest uh, um, uh, test is called the modified Phelan's test. And if Sandra can come over now, my assistant, I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate this test to you. It basically involves putting pressure over the fibro-osseous tunnel, squeezing this and increasing the pressure um, um, uh, abnormally. When we look at a patient with carpal tunnel syndrome, the first thing we observe is the muscles here at the base of the thumb. And in Sandra's case, they're well maintained. If I ask her to pull her thumb up in the air, you can see that the muscle nicely contracts. Hold it there nice and still and don't let me push it down. You can see the muscle contracting. In severe cases of carpal tunnel syndrome, this may be wasted. And here's a clinical photograph showing severe wasting of carpal tunnel syndrome. One of the tests is called Tinell's test, where we tap along the line of the nerve and this is causes irritability. We always start the fingertips working towards the center of the body. And here's Tunnell's test. And as we pass the carpal tunnel area, which is here, the patient may notice this unpleasant electrical type shock symptoms. Another common test is the modified Phelan's test. And this is where we apply some pressure over the carpal tunnel in the palm of the hand and ask the patient to flex forwards and this increases the pressure in the carpal tunnel. After about 15 to 20 seconds, the patient will exhibit their symptoms that's classical for them at night with pins and needles in the thumb, the index, and the middle finger. As soon as I notice some symptoms, I'll stop that test because it can be quite uncomfortable for patients. So how do we treat carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, in the early cases, in the first few weeks, we often ask patients to avoid any activities that might provoke carpal tunnel syndrome. If after a few weeks of rest, this doesn't help, we can give them a splint, particularly to make at night. And splints will rest the position of the hand and prevent it from flexing forward, which can often provoke the symptoms. If this doesn't work, occasionally a steroid injection can be performed, but the literature doesn't really support that as a long-term benefit. 
and most surgeons would recommend uh, surgery if uh, it is more conservative and less invasive methods haven't, hurt, uh, haven't helped. Carpal tunnel syndrome is the commonest orthopedic operation performed. It's usually performed as a day case, walk-in, walk-out procedure under local anaesthetic. Local anaesthetic is infiltrated around the front of the hand and a small incision is made over the front of the, uh, the palm of the hand. The structures are, 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 uh, are pushed to one side and this fibrous band is identified and then this is released making more space for the carpal tunnel and the nerve underneath um, uh, to be more free uh, uh, with less pressure. Small stitches are put into the wound and the patient is put into a bandage with their fingers and their knuckles free so they can actually use the hand quite well. I advise that you don't uh, pick up anything heavy for the first two weeks after surgery. After approximately two days, I advise that this dressing, and this bandage, is taken down and a simple sticky plaster is applied over the dressing and over the wounds. The stitches are taken out in between 10 and 14 days time. The vast majority of patients notice a significant benefit in their symptoms within two to three days of surgery, but occasionally patients will have to wait for a week or two before their symptoms improve. The first symptom is that peaceful, full night's sleep. There are risks, of course, associated with surgery, and these need to be discussed in detail with your surgeon. These would include failure to get complete resolution of your symptoms, and this may occur if your symptoms have been going on for many, many months, if not years, where the nerve becomes permanently scarred. So despite an adequate release by your surgeon, uh, the nerve uh, will fail to recover because it is internally scarred. Infection, damage to blood vessels and nerves, and painful scars are other side effects and complications of carpal tunnel surgery. But by and large, we, we quote between 90 and 95% of uh, a success rate.